Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. To move forward, there had to be reconciliation, and to be reconciled, there must be equity. The Nigerian Project and Igbo Presidency. I'm compared to lend my voice to the politics of the Nigerian President come 2023, even while waiting for the promised next level of 2019, despite having not seen the change of 2015. Recently, Anglo Abdullahi, a Northern Elder, was quoted as saying, if the Igbos won the presidency come 2023, they have to belong. I would think he's talking about belonging to the current ruling party. Anyway, I leave that to the politicians. Why it is true that Nigerian presidency had never given an advantage to any state or region that produced same, apart from the mere advantage it gives to friends, associates, and cronies of the occupant of the office, just like governors alike. But it sure gives those regions a greater sense of belonging in the project called Nigeria. Hence the consistent clamor of it our turn to rule by the various regions who no like to rule after all. It's a notorious fact that Obasanjo and Olufalai, both from the southwestern part of Nigeria, were handed the presidential ticket of their major dominant political parties in Nigeria in 1999 as a way of placating the southwest over the injustice meted out to one of their sons, the hero of our current democratic experience, Chief M.K. Abiola. Despite the rejection of Obasanjo by the southwest at the poll in 1999, in the year 2003, some of the politicians from the region began to jump ship, shouting mainstream politics or power sifts. After all, politics is sweeter from the center. We also cannot forget the cry just before 2003 election of the supposed one-term agreement between OBJ, as it's fondly called, and the supposed Northern elders that gave him the ticket. If there's nothing in it, why clamor for it? The truncated presidency of Omar Musa Yaradwa, God rest his soul, who was from Kansina State, Northern Nigeria, saw another slogan of zoning or no zoning from Northern politicians, while the South-South region that lays the golden egg was boiling as militancy became the order of the day. Even the hand of amnesty extended by Yaradwa administration couldn't quell same until one of theirs, good luck Jonathan, became the number one person in the country. The agitation stopped immediately. After all, nobody complains while eating. For public sympathy or maybe a sense of belonging, the Southeastern name, Ebele, in his name suddenly became conspicuous. Maybe to garner support from a region that barely had a shot at the Nigerian presidency, but definitely not for acceptability from the minority, inside minority like us, because he had their support until he frittered it away by trying to please everybody and ended up pleasing nobody. We are that crossroad of history in our political experiment again, with agitations from every region for the number one seat come 2023, even though we are yet to understand the change in the next level we are in. Therefore, I think the southeastern part of Nigeria should be allowed to produce the president of Nigeria come 2023, irrespective of whether they belong or not. Since the southwest, south-south, and northern part have all had a go at it since 1999, despite Obas and John not belonging. If you know what I mean, failure which we can as well kiss our unity in diversity goodbye. Or Hanez Ndibu should be able to harness the strength of the Igbos to produce widely acceptable candidates to avoid the pitfall of 2003, where they had more than 10 candidates contesting the PDP primaries with Abbasanjo of the Southwest. My advocacy today is that if we must move forward as a nation, we must retrace our step and start from where we abandon our ship of nationhood, the era before the Civil War, to enable us to heal ourselves from the, in, from the inside, and then he, that healing can only come if we are ready to be equitable. Such equity can only be achieved if the presidency is zoned to the eastern part of the country come 2023. I might be wrong, or you might be wrong, but we can both not be wrong. I think you're wrong. <laughs> my question, oh, sorry, I want to jump in. Who is right. the we? Okay, sorry, let, sorry, you were saying something. My question is, who is the we? 
Which part? That's going to allow for an evil presidency in 2023. Because, I mean, it is not you so, and so, I. Let me, let me say why I think he's I'm wrong. I'm not talking though. to you. Let me, let me, let me say why I think, let me <laughs> say why I think you're yeah, wrong. Let's hear you're uh, because and I'll reference Uche's advocacy on um, mental slavery. I think it's a state of mental slavery where you, you, you see a ship that you feel is destined to sink. And instead of building a new ship, you're busy climbing on each other's heads to see who will be on top of each other. The ship of all this zoning thing is a, is a doomed ship. Mm -hmm. And that is what is causing all our problems. I'm telling you that even if you gave the so-called Igbo people you're referring to, because I don't even know who they are, because I'm Igbo, and you gave them this so-called Igbo, Igbo president, not Igbo. Let, if you gave them their so-called Igbo presidency, they will not be placated. Mm -hmm. They will not, because the same, you pointed it out, the same people who are busy, so-called uh, Yoruba or Hausa, are not even giving the people what they need. Mm -hmm. So there's this elite group who are sharing the booty, and we're busy enabling them to continue doing this nonsense. What we want is somebody who is for everybody and for nobody. We want a real, a real, I'm just referencing that. We know he didn't quite execute that. We want somebody who, I don't care where he's from, deliver for us. And the only way you placate the Igbo person who really cares for Nigeria is when you give them the things that are enabling to them achieving. I want a merit-based system. Let's do away with this nonsense of zoning. It will not get anyone anywhere. I you just have more looting. I know, I know the basis on which I like the fact that you looked at every side, mm -hmm. that somehow it was a sweetener, somehow it was a healer, but you can't heal a wound with the wrong medicine. You are, you are, you are misdiagnosing the problem. The problem is not, okay, is not allow, I'm coming now, you, I still have to learn this point. The, you cannot heal point. a wound by misdiagnosing the problem. The problem the problem is not whether you don't have an evil guy. It's because the, the merit-based system is, is, is ruptured. It's not working. Let's restore that, and everybody will feel a sense of justice and equity. Yeah. Um, well, I do. Yes, I agree. We sh it's rather it would be better for us to be in a meritocracy rather than all this zoning and whatnot. Mm. But um, what I think Liboris is explaining is that for us to heal, to move forward, we must address that time. And the only way to address that time is to make those that were marginalized during that time to feel like they belong. Now, it, I think it's absolutely very clear to anybody. Like one, um, the other day I saw somebody put out a post that, oh, um, it's just in the Igbo people's minds that they're marginalized. No, it's not. I don't sit there and think, oh, I feel marginalized per se, but I can see that. You know, they make it seem like, the thought of an Igbo president is like, you know, something that no one can even imagine. Now, the only way, whilst we're still doing all this zoning nonsense, is really, then nobody's saying that the Igbo man that they're going to choose won't be uh, the right candidate. They will get a right candidate, someone like a Peter Obi or whatever the case may be, depending on who you decide is your, your Igbo standard of whatever. But it's just to zone it to that side. Then maybe even after that, then we can kill this nonsense. But the other thing, like you were saying, you don't want people to, you know, you don't want it to be like that. But then the other option is to break away, which I know you, again, you are not for. No, I'm for, could could I'm could for you restructuring, if you can, can let me diffuse answer your power question. from the center. Okay, but I'm not for this zoning, because well, for me, it's like going back. Let me it. agree with you mm. for, for mm. once, that yes, um, let's look for, let's work on meritocracy. Mm. But we cannot also close our eyes to the fact that as we speak today, mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about merit in Nigeria. Yeah, exactly. That's why I told you, I said it is a notorious fact that any zone that produced the presidency or governorship, it has never been too good for them. But as we speak today, you always hear of zoning or no zoning mm -hmm. is our so turn. Should, it is should, not our turn. But for all, no, saying? no, no, that's not what I'm saying. Why we are looking for that El Dorado? Mm. But the situation we find ourselves now is these people are rotating it among themselves. Mm, okay. Why don't you now say, okay, now the South had, uh, Southwest had a turn, mm. South, uh, South South had a turn, the North had a turn. There is other, other people, there are two options but left. This if you want, that let killing, me round up, let me round up. If you, if you want to completely abandon turn by turn and say, let's go for merit, of course. everybody likes it. That was why they even voted for Buhari mm. in the first place. That okay for once, yes. let's have somebody apart from people who knew well. well and say, Look, we this get? is not him. This is not him. Right. But now that some people are saying, let it re remain in the north, let it remain in the let it go back to the southwest. The question is, let's find the balance. If we cannot go to that marriage, I'm not sure it's balanced. The we're next option for, we're looking for, for the us right is thing. Let it go. Because if, like, if we're going to right thing, let me bring in a backstory. The judge will get the right thing. Sorry, we are going to focus on zoning. Then let's do it right. Is there any right way to zone? Well, there is. Because let me explain. Let me explain why I have Obama's presidency didn't benefit anyone. But they were happy. 
happy because Li a black Libras, man was you bad. need to let, let us the, discuss this. The, let me just... Ex sorry, mm -hmm. Chika, I'll have to leave the yeah, floor you see, to you. You see, the thing is, we are trapped in rotation. Mm. Are like we trapped? Isn't yeah, that yeah, we're trapped. We're trapped. Let me no, 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 no. We're trapped we're because let me tell you, no matter that. how you intellectualize this thing, I'm, there are very simple that. people out there, and I know for sure that before you dis before you remove rotation, you have to make sure that it has rotated. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, nobody is going to be happy in this country. Mm, exactly. So that means that, in fact, if we want to have the last presidency based on rotation, yes, then, it then we needs better to just be go to the east, finish with him, and then say. The post is now open. Sorry, but yeah. let me tell you I'll something. It, the moment you say the blood. post is now open, what will happen? You will find that there will be confusion everywhere because we don't even understand anymore how to vote on merit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Sandra. So what then happened? Back to you. I'm, right at this point, I'm actually inclined ask me, ask to. Me. I'm actually inclined <laughs> to agree with his advocacy. Mm. But then the question then is, what then happens if we all clamor behind? an Igbo um, presidency, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, the presidency comes from whichever, but perhaps the northern Nigeria again. Mm -hmm. So are we going to continue in that slavery mindset? It's saying that we still no. have to so wait to for the Igbo presidency rotation. Now. She's not asking the question. She's asking me. No, okay, it's she's actually asking. a question. You <laughs> know, what happens me. if, <laughs> at the end of the day, come 2023, an Igbo president doesn't emerge, then we have to let wait another quickly, four years. Let me quickly, so that uh, Kenya okay, uh, is waiting to reach it. Let me give you, let me give you an example. When, before the 2015 election, the North were agitating. It's our turn, it's our turn. Then Buhari came, everybody felt this would be on merit. It would, he would take people on merit, he would um, do everything on merit. And then the man came, his first few appointments were from the North. The and then people started ones? asking questions. So does it mean that it is only good people are from this place? Or that's mm. not. And so we all now, that's why, that's why Chuka said we are trapped in rotation. So everybody now started saying, well, maybe we should also look at this region. Mm. And then you can count all the appointments, all of them, from one side. No sense of belonging. I, I, and so some people so, felt, so, look, so, so, now if that is the case, let us all, all better go our separate way. And then those mm. wounds that came before the war, because these were some of the issues. Mm -hmm. They started reopening them. Mm -hmm. For us to heal those wounds and move forward, no matter how irresponsible, whether they will misuse the opportunity, Igbo people, you poor not Please allow yes. me to take, come in. Take one shot. Allow me to come in, And then we, we progress. Um, I, I, because I really do feel we need to look at it and say, if you catch yourself playing this game, you, it's a downward spiral. If, when I look at the story behind Libros' advocacy, the real puppeteers here, people puppeteering us all, it would seem, are these northern elders. That's why the man makes bold to say, we will only get behind people. Those are the people we need to dismantle, not to play into their game, because you can never play. I'm coming, I'm coming. Libras, yeah, allow me to make my point. Please, please, allow me to make my point. Please, allow me to make my point. The point being that, because Chuka seems to believe that somehow, if you let the last presidency, then you can now start dismantling. You won't, because those people are only fixated on being the ones making. Let me ask you a oh, question. Okay, to, dismantle please, it. Yeah, dismantle yeah, dismantle the correct structure. I'm coming, I'm coming. Dismantle it now from the outside. I'm coming, I'm coming. But first of all, you need to say it's up. So you need to not play that game because you will never play it as well as them. That's what they want to be playing. the kingmakers. And if they, they make an Igbo presidency, then there's still the power behind the power. You well, need to, we you need can't, to realize that they're the enemy finish, and not, yeah, can we you can't, can't, finish you can't this sustain issue. this thing. Yeah. Um, we can't, we can't um, exhaust this topic because it's a very passionate ah, and, uh, okay. and hot one. We raise the issues here so that we can trash it out and explore it way forward. You, you can take it off from there. You're a vital part of this discussion, so keep uh, your comments coming in on our Facebook plus TV, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, I can't say Twitter, Twitter, at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com for slash the advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. That's it for today. Till next week, when we have some fresh brew topic that affect us all, let's keep advocating for a better society. See you then. Bye-bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they want. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think
think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize.